I recently released a conversion guide that showed you how to kitbash your own Legion of the Damned miniatures, and a good number of you asked me how I painted the finished model that was featured in that video. So I'm Pete the Wargamer, and today I'll be showing you how I paint the Legion of the Damned. For this tutorial, I just painted a Reaver head. However, the techniques that I demonstrate can easily be applied to the rest of the Space Marines armor. So I began by priming. How you go about this doesn't really matter. However, the color you choose does. It needs to be black. I wanted a dark colored armor for the heat effects to contrast against, which will make them appear much brighter than they really are. Once the part was primed, I could begin to add a little color. I chose Anthracite Grey from AK Interactive and added a small amount to my wet palette. Using a round brush or makeup brush like this one, I dipped it into the paint and then used a piece of paper towel to help work the paint through the bristles and also to remove the excess. You only want a small amount of paint to remain here, enough so that it barely leaves any paint when you brush it over your finger. Once the brush was prepped, I could apply this over the helmet. This dry brushing technique will cause the paint to build up on the flat surfaces, but it will keep the recesses dark. When I tackled the full model from my conversion guide, I did use an airbrush to apply the armor color, but this technique is just as effective and much more accessible. Now I chose a very dark and slightly washed out blue for this scheme because it will create the greatest contrast between the orange and the yellows of the fire. On the color wheel, orange sits opposite blue, which means they complement each other and so will appear more vibrant. Additionally, the warmth of the orange will further the distinction in colors against the cooler blue. Next, I added a very small amount of pastel yellow to my anthracite gray, just enough to lighten the mixture a little. I then proceeded to use the same dry brushing technique to apply the paint. This time, I focused more on parts at the top of the model, areas such as the head, the shoulders, and also the backpack. This lightening of the blue paint simulates the light sources above the model, which would lighten these upper areas more than the lower ones. Finally, I added a little more pastel yellow to my previous mixture and used this as an edge highlight. Again, I focused on the edges that are towards the top of the model. This not only helped to bring out these details, but also continues the appearance of lighting that I started in the previous step. With the basic color of the armor completed, I could begin with the bone effects of the model. I wanted to keep most of the paints that I used to be very dark and subdued, so as to not to impact on how bright the flames appeared. So I took some vampiric flesh and watered it down with a little airbrush thinner to create a thin mixture like this. This thin mixture was then applied over any bone areas, such as the face, like I'm covering here, or the bow motifs that I applied on the chest. The first layer covered over most of the area, but I kept the recesses dark to help keep those details more visible. I also applied some vertical strokes across the forehead to help continue the skull appearance that we started at the bottom of the face. After this first layer, the bone color is very subtle, yet is still just about visible. To help bring out the details a little further, I then applied a second coat, focusing on just the more prominent details like the teeth and the cheekbones. For the metal areas, again, I wanted something dark, so I chose to use some gun metal. Again, this was applied so that the recesses were kept dark and only the more raised areas were painted. The result was a charred and blackened metal. Finally, after cleaning out my brushes and water to remove any metallic flakes from the previous step, I set about painting the heat effects. I began with some deep orange, thinned out with a little airbrush thinner to create a slightly more workable mixture. Armed with a thin brush, I then focused my application of this paint directly into the recesses of the armor. I only focused on the recesses that were formed from gaps between the armor plates. For example, the sides of the vent at the top of the helmet wouldn't be painted, but the vent that faces forward would be. This created the appearance that heat is seeping out from within the armor, finding any gaps to stream out of. I decided to quite heavily focus the application in and around the eyes. This is often a point of the model that draws attention. 
So ramping up the heat in this area naturally helps to boost this model's otherworldliness. With the same principle as before, I then set about applying some dots of deep yellow to the same recesses. This lighter paint would appear as points of intense heat and cause the emanating light to appear as though it's shifting and is more organic. For the eyes, I painted them entirely with this yellow. Again, this needed to be the most intense points of heat, something that I'll be continuing with in the next step. Finally, using some pure white, I added some small dots of white to the centers of the eyes. As this was the only area that I added white to, it makes them look much hotter than the rest of the model and really completes the look of that intense heat. And so that is how I went about painting the armor of my Legionnaire of the Damned. Even though I only focused on the head in this tutorial, the techniques are easily applicable across the whole model. It's a very simple method that, due to the use of dry brushing for the bulk of the armor, can actually be applied pretty quickly to create an interesting result on your miniatures. Now, if you haven't done so already, be sure to check out my Legion of the Damned conversion guide, which you can find a link to below. And if you enjoyed this guide, please do consider subscribing to be kept up to date with all of my latest videos. So, as always, I just want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters and the folks who use my affiliates links. Your help is always greatly appreciated. If you like this video, then check out my other conversion guides and please do consider subscribing. And so until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.